Adventures of Janie Grace, A Dinner to Remember, A Tale of Comparison and Gratitude, written by Jessica Lisk, illustrated by Gabby Correa, narration by Vivi's Bookshow. Hi, friend, Janie Grace here, and I can't wait to tell you about one of my favorite holiday memories ever. It's a story of a lifetime, full of time travel that goes all the way back to the very first Thanksgiving. I shared a dinner roll with the pilgrim, you know. Okay, not really. But it's a pretty meaningful story, I think. And if you pay close attention, it could very well change your whole outlook on life. One cool November morning, I was super excited to get to school because Miss Buchanan has said that on the last day before Thanksgiving, we will make our very own hand turkeys. And believe me, I'm a master at those things. Not only that, but my grandparents, Nina and Papa said that they would take us to the countywide fall festival later that night. Boy, was I looking forward to that thing. And on top of it all, the very next day was Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving and Nina and Papa's were the best. So I threw my backpack over my shoulder, pushed up my glasses, and headed out on the day's new adventure. The morning was going super great until my best friend Amaya got on the bus. She had gotten brand new shoes. And not just any new shoes. They were the ones that I had been wanting forever and ever. They were also the ones mom had said, no way Jose about. So I powdered my face up a little and tried to stay calm. Don't you just love my new shoes? Amaya asked eagerly. I forced myself to smile at her. Sure, I said. But actually, I wasn't sure at all. Because they were hers and not mine. That's why. At school, I tried forgetting about those pesky shoes. Because I was still really looking forward to making hand turkeys. Especially when Miss Buchanan said we could use any supplies we wanted from the art cabinet. So I got to work on my master plan. I just knew that my hand turkey would be the greatest of them all. I was working away, gluing feathers and googly eyes and adding some sparkles, of course. When I heard Miss Buchanan give a compliment to Johnny. Wow, what a great turkey, Johnny, she said. I looked over at his turkey. I had to admit it. Did look pretty great. What about my turkey, Miss Buchanan? Don't you think it looks great too? Of course, Janie Grace, she said with a smile. But I couldn't help feeling like my turkey wasn't the best of them all anymore. So I finished my gluing and hung it up by the window to dry. Next, it was time for recess. But I wasn't feeling like my normal self because now Maya was the fastest runner on the playground because of her brand new shoes. And Johnny was a master of hand turkeys. So I found a seat on the bench and tried to think about all the fun I had at the fall festival later that night. I felt like the day took forever, but when Nina and Papa finally picked us up, I couldn't contain my excitement. Except from the moment we got there, it was a disaster. All the pretty pumpkins had already been taken from the pumpkin patch, and all I could find was a squatty one. The apple pie that Papa and I had made for the contest was not the winner, and trust me, we know apple pie. And the kid in front of me got the last funnel cake, so all I got was a candy apple, which was fine, I guess, but it was no funnel cake. To top it all off, Oliver was the best at finding his way out of the corn maze, while I could barely even understand that thing. I was finally filling up to participate in the sack race, but about halfway through, I started to panic because everyone else was going faster than me. I was so busy looking at them that, guess what? I tripped over my own feet and tumbled to the ground in a heap. So I wasn't the winner of that either. Papa took us to the bounce house next, but I was too upset to bounce because it seemed like the day was going great for everyone but me. So I just sat and stewed. Later that night, I was relieved when mom said it was bedtime. I just wanted to put the day behind me. Besides, I just knew that the next day would be perfect because it was Thanksgiving at Nina and Papa's, of course. Until it wasn't perfect. When my cousin, Annabeth, showed up that afternoon, I stewed some more. 
I didn't mean to. It was just that she had the most perfect silky red hair that I ever seen. And she was wearing the most beautiful yellow bow in it. And not only that, but she and her brother had brand new cell phones. Another. No way, Jose, from mom. They also lived in a super magnificent house, but that was besides the point. Why can't I have perfect silky red hair with a beautiful yellow bow? Why don't I get to have a cell phone or a magnificent house? I don't have any of those things. It just doesn't seem fair, I thought. So I went to the porch to think about all the unfairness in the world. And I got there just in time to see Papa's truck heading off. He was going to meet the cows with all the other kids. Just great. That's my favorite thing ever to do with Papa, and I'm missing it. Just then, Nina spotted me sulking from out of the kitchen window. You know, I could use a set of helping hands in here. She called out the door. I had to admit that all the smells coming from the kitchen were rather amazing, and I did love helping Nina in the kitchen. Plus, there wasn't much else to do, so... I did a big sigh and headed into the kitchen. Nina showed me how to set the dining room table. She had lots of different sized pumpkins and candles and of course all the yummy food that she wanted to place down the center of the long table. I was quietly working for a while when Nina came back over to check on me. Isn't it beautiful? She asked. Isn't what beautiful? I said back. How each thing on the table is so different, she explained. I wrinkled my nose up at her because I didn't understand what she meant at all. She laughed a little. (laughs) Look at all the different types of pumpkins. Some are big and round, some are short and spotted. And the candles, see how they each give off a beautiful light, even though they are a little different from each other. I guess so, I finally said. And look at all these amazing dishes of yummy food, she said and her eyes lit up. Each one is so different, but oh, how we all enjoy all the different flavors. Yes, but everyone knows that the turkey is a star of the show, I told her, feeling a little sad for the ham, which she had just pulled out of the oven. Oh, I don't know, she said. Some people love ham even more than turkey. But do you think that the ham or turkey mind? Nope. They're just both just here to be the best they can be and to serve their purpose. And that's to fill our bellies, she laughed. That's silly, I said, still not understanding. Janie Grace, she said, kind of serious. I know you were disappointed yesterday when things didn't go your way. And then again earlier today when you didn't get to go with Papa. But I think you may have been so busy focusing on what you didn't have that you missed out on all the things that you did have. I thought about the hand turkey. How I had so much fun making it until I heard Miss Buchanan compliment Johnny. I thought about my how excited I was for the fall festival and Thanksgiving with Nina and Papa until I got all caught up thinking about my squatty pumpkin, not getting any funnel cake, Annabeth's amazing hair and new phone, and also her house. I thought about how I didn't play at recess or jump in the bounce house. Nina was right. I was so busy stewing and focusing on what was going wrong that I miss out on all the amazing things that were right in front of me. I think you're right, I said. But it's so hard to be thankful when I keep seeing everyone around me getting all the good stuff. It just doesn't seem fair. You want to know a secret? Nina said. My ears perked up a little because I love secrets. She leaned in close. The secret to being truly thankful is never looking at what someone else has but always looking at what you have. Right now, today, we have so much to be thankful for. If we aren't careful, we'll get so busy looking at everyone else that we just might miss all the amazing things that are right in front of us. I knew she was right. Nina, is it too late to make this the best Thanksgiving ever? I asked. Never, she said. We smiled and squeezed each other tight. Nina and I were just getting the last of the food on the table when all of a sudden the power went out. My mind raced. There's no way we'll be able to have the perfect Thanksgiving dinner now. I thought about the other families having a perfect Thanksgiving dinner around their cozy dining room tables at that very moment. But before I let my mind take off like a runaway train, I remember what Nina had said. The secret to being truly thankful is never looking at what someone else has but always looking at what you have 
right now, today. I also realized that just maybe someone out there was sitting and wishing they had what was right in front of me. Well, I said out loud, we do have a table outside and we do have candles and all this yummy food. Nina left and helped me move everything outside. That's right, I had the best Thanksgiving ever. I didn't have new shoes or silky red hair and a yellow bow or a cell phone, but I did have family and laughs and lots of yummy food with lots of different flavors. And it was all just beautiful. Today, I'm the one that's in charge of cooking the big Thanksgiving meal. I'm all grown up now, but I tell this story to my little girl when she feels down about the things she didn't have. I tell her to always focus on the wonderful things around her. I tell her that all the different flavors are what makes the world beautiful. And I tell her the secret to always being truly thankful is never looking at what someone else has, but always focus on what you have right now, today. And I tell her that if she pays close attention, it could very well change her whole outlook on life. The end. <laughs>